Hello, everyone. Welcome to Verve Industrial's presentation on our top five lessons to accelerate your OT or ICS cybersecurity journey. By way of introduction, I'm John Livingston. I'm the CEO of Verve Industrial. I spent 20 years of my career with McKinsey and Company, helping industrial companies improve their strategies and operations. Over the last five years, I've been part of Verve Industrial as the CEO, helping clients improve their overall cybersecurity. Who is Verve Industrial, you might ask? We've been in business for over 25 years, helping clients across a range of ICS and OT issues um, in all sorts of vendor environments. Uh, our team is composed of ICS and OT engineers and experts. Um, over the last 12 years or so, we have been developing and deploying our ICS endpoint management platform to help our clients achieve greater ICS and OT cybersecurity maturity. Uh, and that includes dozens of clients all over uh, the world uh, and in different industrial sectors. Uh, we provide our software platform as well as a range of OT and ICS specific professional services. So let me start today with what we call our hero. Our hero is the OT cybersecurity leader. Sometimes that person's from OT, sometimes that person is from IT. And typically they have a range of questions. Uh, first of all, where do I start? Where do I begin this process? Number two, how do I make progress quickly and demonstrate that progress to the people who I need to demonstrate to? Number three, how do I coordinate between IT and OT and get the most out of which one and sometimes potentially keep them from fighting with one another? Next, where do I find skills and talent to be able to achieve this? And then finally, how do I scale and maintain, um, given limited budgets uh, and, and, and stretched workforces, how do I scale the program that I'm trying to build? And these are the challenges that we hear consistently when we first get introduced to companies. So what is our database of experience? As I mentioned, we've been at this for 25 years, working on automation and controls, programming, monitoring, and security. Over 100 clients across a whole range of different industries, power and water, refining, pulp and paper, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with just as many different organization mo organizational models and challenges, each organization is unique and the way therefore they have to go about OT or ICS maturity programs is also unique. Next, thousands of different network architectures. We've, we've pretty much seen them all. Uh, and different OEM vendor setups and architectures and mixes, et cetera. Uh, we've seen a range of different sizes from single plants uh, thousand, to thousands of locations all over the world, all being networked back centrally. And then really we've been involved in pretty much every OT or ICS function from programming them to alarm management and monitoring data historian analysis, security. So we come at this with not just a specific security lens, but an overall perspective of the challenges of running these systems, and then how does security add to that overall challenge? So what are Verb's top five roadmap suggestions based on that experience? Well, as we think about building a roadmap and, and any kind of map, you wanna be clear on where you're going. What is your destination? And the way we think about that is picking a framework, whether it be the NIST cybersecurity framework or CIS top 20 or ISA, whatever it is that works for your organization, pick something that gives you some guidance and follow the leader as it were. Number two, focus on the end point. Uh, we often hear people getting distracted and running around trying to figure out, okay, I need to segment my network or I need to do network uh, detection, anomaly detection, et cetera. And what we've found and we'll show you is the benefits of starting with the endpoint and thinking about protecting and managing those endpoints is the place to begin. Number three, sharing the ride between IT and OT. Each of these parts of the organization has unique skills and ensuring that we're working each of those skills in the most effective way possible to share the burden and share the ride and get the most out of each part. Number four, Track progress and maintain your vehicle in the journey. This is something that we refer to as OTSM or OT systems management. We believe it is the key to significantly and rapidly improving your OT security maturity. 
It, it's around things like patching, configuration management, ensuring backups, ensuring vulnerability management is happening, et cetera, et cetera. And it, what it allows you to do, number one, is it allows you to track how you're doing and continually improving overall your, your overall security. But secondly, it allows you to maintain that and ensure you're continuing to improve over time. And then finally, as we think about this journey, it is global. So think global, but act local. What we mean by that is centralize as much as possible the analysis of vulnerabilities, of threats, et cetera, drive scale in that, but localize the actions to ensure that, the, that there's reliability because the folks in those facilities know their systems best. And so whatever platforms and tools, et cetera, you use, make sure they can centralize the analysis, but then allow automation of those local actions because that is really key to making sure you have security and reliability at the same time. So first, how do you pick a framework? Well, on the left-hand side of this chart, what you see is the last two SANS ICS security surveys. And what the question is around which standards, if any, are you using uh, in your ICS journey? And what you see there is the NIST cybersecurity framework remains the number one uh, standard that people use in 2019 is the gray bar. Um, CIS top 20 has declined a little bit from the 2017 survey, but is also very popular. And then as you see ISO 27000 and the IEC 62443 standards or ISA 99 are also very popular. Each of these is very similar at the end of the day. As you look at the right hand side here, what we've done is overlaying the CIS top 20 on the NIST cybersecurity framework. And then most importantly, that framework, because it defines my end state, my goal, my destination, as it were, it allows me to then lay out a roadmap. And as you can see here, this is just one example of a potential roadmap. But as you can see, the, I, I begin with things like access management policies or configuration and patch policies, ensure I have hardware, software, configuration, a full range of asset inventory information and vulnerability information. And then I can start to do things like patching, deploying access uh, remediation, deploying whitelisting. And over time, increase my overall set of initiatives and maturity by adding in further and further advanced protection. And the roadmap, sorry, the, the framework allows you to build this roadmap in a very structured way. First, our second key learning is to focus on the end point. We often hear this debate of where to begin the maturity journey, network segmentation and monitoring or at the end point. And I think the general first impressions are typically lean towards the network side. Segment first, if you can quickly drop in a firewall to separate IT from OT, can insulate those IT attacks moving across, which makes all the sense in the world. Focusing on anomalous, uh, monitoring of anomalous behaviors, since there's this general philosophy that you can't patch OT, so just focus on monitoring. Uh, so oftentimes endpoint protection is seen as risky because you have to actually engage with the assets in the network. A number of reasons which have some validity to them. Our learnings, however, point us in a different direction. They point us more towards focusing on endpoint security as the first step in your journey. Uh, first of all, effective network segmentation is often much more complex than let on. Number two, monitoring is often more expensive and provides less visibility than advertised because of the need for taps and, and multiple segmented networks and subnets, et cetera, it's often hard to get the visibility you'd actually aspire to get to in OT networks. Um, and we've actually found that endpoint security can be done very safely uh, and can achieve rapid security advances, uh, as well as then lay the groundwork for future network security actions. Um, it requires a very tuned approach, an agent agentless approach that we use uh, that can be deployed very, very quickly. Um, number two, uh, it integrates the remediation actions with the, uh, with the visibility and the assessment so you can accelerate your time to maturity. It enables proper risk prioritization and trade-offs of things like compensating controls. And then finally, you really can't segment what you don't know exists so focusing on endpoint 
management, including inventory, including uh, all of the assessment work, et cetera, allows you then to plan out your network segmentation in a way that's more effective, more uh, efficient, and frankly, uh, provides a greater level of, of security. To do that, however, it's key to have deep visibility into those endpoints. We've spent 25 years working on this, building a capability to get deep, deep, deep visibility into these endpoints. It is the critical element that allows you to do effective endpoint management and security in OT. Some of the biggest risks are things like dormant accounts, uh, shared passwords, uh, misconfigured firewalls, aging AV signatures. There's, there are things about that asset that's more than just what OS is it running, for instance, and is there a CVE or a vulnerability out there on that OS? Um, installed software that may not have any vulnerabilities in it, but it introduces risks in the environment that are unnecessary. Things like log me in and other sort of remote access software. Do I really need it on these machines? Third, by getting deep, you know what type of system it is. You know if it's a remote gateway, you know if it's a domain controller, et cetera. That allows you to prioritize the actions and prioritize the vulnerabilities that may exist. And that full view of things like, as you see on the right-hand side of this page, not only things like installed software and vulnerabilities, but knowing is whitelisting in lockdown, is there a recent backup, et cetera, allows you to prioritize the actions, not just patching, but also all of the various compensating controls. The third main learning we've had is to leverage each of the group strengths, the IT and OT strengths, um, as we call it, sharing the ride, right? So IT has very, very significant capabilities that we need to leverage in this journey. We think about it of helping them help us define the destination. Okay, great. What are the common metrics and objectives that we want to report to the C-suite and the board? Um, providing the security analysis and design and the expertise and the scale on analyzing vulnerabilities and threat intel, et cetera. Defining the processes to, for review, for audit, et cetera. So really thinking about them defining the destination. On the OT side, thinking about this team as, okay, how am I gonna get there? What's the map look like? Okay, I know the destination, but what's the map gonna look like? How? Are we going to achieve these objectives safely, efficiently, and effectively in OT? How do we sequence the initiatives in the right order, given the operational realities in the site? How do we make sure we focus on the greatest risks because we understand our OT solutions? And what are the alternate routes where IT solutions may not work? Um, so for instance, we're not gonna go use vulnerability scanning because it can trip the plant. Okay, what are the alternatives that we have to deliver the destination get us to their destination, but without risking the plan. And then as we think about bringing these two teams together, we think about that as defining the rules of the road, as it were. Meaning, as we think about getting to that destination, there's going to have to be exceptions. There's gonna to have to be, for instance, on embedded devices, we're probably not gonna patch them as often as we do a Windows device. Okay, how is that exception policy going to work? What are the compensating controls that we're gonna use when the IT directive doesn't quite work in OT. And then finally, what are the different tools? So I'm not going to use a vulnerability scanner to scan my PLCs. Okay, so what are the rules gonna be as to how we pick those alternative solutions? And we really think by, as we say, sharing the road or sharing the ride, that bringing IT and OT together in a consistent way and an effective way really helps us accelerate this journey. The fourth learning we've had is around, main, is the, around the importance of maintaining and measuring and managing this journey. And this comes down to this term we refer to as OT systems management. The chart that you're seeing here is from the CyberSeq database. And what it highlights is the number of open positions in the cybersecurity industry. So over 75% of the open positions in cybersecurity are effectively around managing systems, provisioning them, operating and maintaining them, protecting and defending them. Only roughly 15% are about the more, I'll call it advanced threat analysis that we often think of when we think of cybersecurity. Analyzing data, incident response, anomaly detection, 
log analysis, et cetera. All of those things critically important. Again, they're very important. We're not saying they're not important, but 75% of the jobs in cybersecurity are about management and maintenance. Our big learning is we can get distracted on the things that are at the bottom of the page here. They sound sexy, they sound exciting. It's we're gonna keep this or that foreign actor from our system. But the reality is 75% of the operations are about monitoring, I'm sorry, about maintaining and managing those systems, patching them, ensuring your configurations are hardened, ensuring your access control lists are correct, ensuring that your AV is updated, your white listings are, your white listing is in back, uh, in lockdown, you have your backups up to date. This systems management part of security is absolutely critical. It allows you to measure how you're doing and allows you to maintain your security status as you go. The fifth key learning we have is what we call think global, act local. The basic point of this is centralize analysis and design of your security remediations as much as possible. Pull those things up centrally because you're gonna need to have scale. The only way to get to cybersecurity maturity is to scale those things you can. But then act locally, ensure that Actions, whether those be patching, configuration hardening, software removal, account removal, uh, network device hardening, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure those actions are controlled locally, i.e. within the control of the OT leadership uh, of those sites, plants, whatever it happens to be in your environment, because that allows you to ensure the reliability, those actions are taken at the right timing for that particular operational environment. So as we come back from those key five things, those key learnings on the left-hand side, picking a framework, setting a roadmap, starting at the endpoint, sharing the road IT and OT, maintaining and monitoring the vehicle or the, the uh, OT systems management, and think globally, act locally. And so we've taken that and, and we've made that a part of who we are and what we do. Uh, so we provide a platform for comprehensive security, as we've mentioned, the Verve Security Center. This platform enables really deep endpoint visibility and management. It delivers IT-like capabilities into OT, but that don't risk the OT operation. So it allows us to really share the road, as it were, between IT and OT and deliver to uh, the leadership team the same kind of security management that they're used to getting in IT in OT. It allows uh, OT systems management at scale. And finally, it allows for low-cost deployment and scaled management. Um, in this think global, act local kind of mindset. The Verve Security Center itself includes this basic architecture. So it includes an IT OT agent that is put on all of the Windows and Unix and Linux type assets. Uh, and it allows that deep visibility without having to use taps and span ports, et cetera. We then have an agentless capability, which extends out to all of the embedded devices where you can't put an agent and communicates them Within, with the same protocols that the OEMs are used to using. And then finally, Verve, Asset, uh, Verve Security Center integrates with a whole range of uh, other tools, everything from backup solutions to AV and whitelisting to uh, ServiceNow, et cetera, et cetera. That then rolls up into a site level asset manager where a bunch of the ETL and, and, and integrations happen. And that then is pushed up to an open NoSQL database uh, centrally. And that's really where that think global part can happen. You have all of that data flowing upwards to that in a very, very secure way that allows us to do the analysis of the risks, the vulnerabilities across every asset and every endpoint in your network. And then very importantly, Verve, because we have the agent and agentless information uh, capabilities in the network, we then have the action ability. And so we can build actionable playbooks centrally, those can then be pushed down locally. And then critically, 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 as we've talked about before, those actions are controlled locally. So when we're going to uh, have a patch delivered or change a configuration, et cetera, that local team, if it's a power organization, let's say a generation, let's say, that team in the plant makes the call as to when that patch is delivered, how it's delivered, uh, et cetera. And so this basic architecture allows us to deliver on those five key learnings that we've had. And the platform provides an integrated solution across that framework. So 
against identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. Against each of those elements, the Verve platform provides uh, a, a solution that is best in class for that particular element of the framework. And most importantly, allows all of that in one place. So you don't have multiple tools uh, where you're having to try and sort and slice and dice uh, the information across the various toolkits that you have. And the results are pretty good. Uh, this is the, uh, these are the results from one of our clients before and after Verve. These are the various elements of the NIST cybersecurity framework. The green or gray bars are the, uh, what their scores were on those dimensions prior to Verve deployment. And the gold bars were their measurements after they deployed Verve. And as you can see, there's roughly uh, overall about a 2x improvement before Verve deployed and after Verve was deployed. Again, all by learning from taking those learnings from the 25 years we've been in business and applying them to the solutions um, and the services that we offer to be able to focus on how do we get the greatest amount of security maturity in the least amount of time at the least cost. So we really appreciate your time today and we look forward to having you join us in our virtual booth. Thanks so much.